Today we shall be talking about binding energy mass defect, binding energy per nucleon, nuclear fission, nuclear fusion, and nuclear reaction. But before we go into the following topics, we have to look at the foundations because I intend to take this subject one after the other for you to have a proper understanding of what it is all about. So before I go to all this, I would like us to look at what an atom is. Looking at the shape here, you see the nucleus. And then inside the nucleus, you see the neutron and the proton. And outside the nucleus are the electrons. An atom is the smallest indivisible particle of an element that can take part in a chemical reaction. So that's how we can define an atom. I would not really go deeply into other things about the atom, but I just want to throw more light on this so it will refresh your memory. The nucleus. The nucleus of an atom is the positively charged center of the atom and it contains most of its masses. So if you look at the, the diagram here, you see that the proton is embedded inside the nucleus. And then we have the nu neutron still inside the nucleus. So the definition that we have here says that the nucleus of the atom is the positively charged center of the atom, and it contains most of its masses. OK. So what is an element? We are going to talk about element. Sometimes we use the term chemical element. It still means the same thing as saying element. So what is this element all about? An element is a substance which cannot be split into smaller units by an ordinary chemical process. So whenever we mention the term element, I don't want you to be confused about what an element is. Look at this, this figure here, X. If I should erase this. Okay, um, let me make it this way. I just come here and then I write the alphabet. X. This X here signifies an element. Okay. So in front of the X, we have some alphabets. By the left, the one on top is called the mass number. If you don't call it the mass number, you call it the nucleon number. And the one below is called the atomic number. And if you don't call it the atomic number, you call it the proton number. And still in this element X, we have the neutron, which I'm going to show you how we can get the neutron still from the element X. But let's just look at the following definitions. Let me magnify this so that you can see clearly. Z here, I said it's called the atomic number, or you call it the proton number. And then the A here 
is called the mass number, or you call it the nucleon number. So what is this atomic number all about? Atomic number Z is the number of protons in the nucleus. So whenever we talk about atomic number, we are also referring to the proton number. So most of the times we may tend to use them interchangeably. Somebody mentions atomic number. It's also talking about the proton number or somebody mentions the term proton number. It means the same thing. So atomic number Z is the number of proton in the nucleus of the atom. Number of protons in the nucleus of the atom. If we also talk about the mass number, the mass number is simply the sum of the proton and the neutron. The sum of the proton and the neutron. And we, are, we can also call it the nucleon number. The nucleon number A. It has a formula A equals to Z plus A. So the A here represents or signifies the mass number, then Z is the proton number, and then N is the neutron. What is neutron? Neutron is simply the number of neutrons in the nucleus. So the neutron number N is the number of neutrons in the nucleus. So even when we had talked about the element X, I didn't indicate the neutron. So the moment you see the elements, the mass number and the atomic number, you should be able to deduce the neutron number using the formula A equals to Z plus N. Okay, so looking at this, you have A equals to Z plus N. What is the meaning of the Z here? The proton number, and this is the neutron, and this is the nucleon, or the mass number. Okay, so if we are to solve for the neutron, then we are going to make the neutron the subject from this expression, and that becomes N equals to A minus Z. A minus Z. Okay. So all I have just explained, look at the elements here. Here we have A the mass number or the nucleon. Let me magnify this so that Okay, so this is the element X. A here is the mass number or you call it the nucleon. This one is the atomic number, or you call it the proton number. Now, the A here is equals to Z plus N. That's what I'm trying to say. So, this N was not written here, but you just know that the A here is equals to Z plus N. So let me put it this way, Z plus N. So the moment you know what the nucleon number is and what the proton number is, you should be able to solve for the neutron number. Okay, so this is an element, aluminum, AL. Looking at this, we have 27. This 27 here signifies the nucleon number. And 13, you are seeing here, 
signifies the proton number. So here, if we are to solve for or find the nucleus or the neutron, sorry, if we are to find the neutron, that would be a subtraction 27 minus 13. And whatever it will give you would be the correct answer. Okay, so if we are subtracting 7 by 3 here, we'll get 4. 2 minus 1 here, we'll have 1. So the remainder is 14. So the neutron number would be 14. Let's quickly look at the following. We have other examples here, helium, four and two. So here the nucleon number is four. Let me magnify this. Okay. The nucleon number here is four. The proton number is two. So you are to find the neutron number, which is four minus two, and that will give you two. We have lithium. The nucleon number is six. The proton number is three. The neutron number would be six minus three. Of course, let me just bring this expression here. So this is the formula I'm using. Okay, so my A here for lithium is seven. So I would simply say seven minus my Z. What is my Z here? Three. This will give me four. So the four there represents the neutron number. Okay. I would like you to solve for beryllium and boron. Just test your understanding. Okay. If we talk about the term nuclides, you shouldn't be confused as well. If we have a nucleus that splits into two, the new units which are formed is simply referred to as the nuclides. Let's look at the definition. When the nucleus is split into two, different cells or units are formed, and they are called the, nucle the nuclides. Okay, so whenever we talk about nuclides, there are units that are formed from the nucleus. It's not something you you get confused about. And then another term that we are going to use is the isotopes. Isotopes. Of course, I have told you what proton number is, and I have told you what uh, mass number is. Let's still go back and look at what I'm trying to say. This is the element X. This element has the mass number. If you don't call it the mass number, you call it the nucleon number. And it also has the atomic number Z. If you don't call it atomic number, you call it the proton number. And I also said that we use them interchangeably. Okay. All right. So let me just lift this down. Good. 
कोई चीज ही है Look at this. The isotopes of an element have the same z value. What is the z value? The same proton number or the same atomic number, but different mass number, different nucleon. Are you with me? Okay, so what are isotopes? Whenever we talk about isotopes, you hear the word isotopes. It means they are elements that have the same proton number, the same atomic number, but their mass numbers are different. Like if you see this one, this is carbon. It has six here, but the mass number, the nuclear number is 11. Look at this other one. This one has six the proton number is six but the mass number or the nucleon number is 12. look at this one proton number six nucleon number 13. this one proton number six uh, nucleon number 14. whenever you see all these these are isotopes we call them isotopes so I think um, that is how far we can go for today's class. So this is just an introductory class. We have talked about isotopes. We have talked about the nuclides. We have talked about other terms like the nucleon number, the proton. We've talked about an atom. We've talked about atomic number and then the neutron. So please, before our next class, I want you to understand all these terms. I've mentioned elements, I've shown you the figure of an atom and how it looks like. Understand this so that by the time I start the next class, you should really get a good understanding of what I am trying to say. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your stay. Have a wonderful day.